The Second Book of Enoch The Story of Enoch, How the Lord Took Him to Heaven There was a wise man and a great artisan whom the Lord took away, and he loved him so that he might see the highest realms of the most wise and great and inconceivable unchanging kingdom of God Almighty. Also, to see the most marvelous and glorious and shining and many-eyed station of the Lord's servants, and of the Lord's immovable throne, the ranks and organizations of the bodiless armies, the indescribable composition of the multitude of the elements, the variegated appearance and indescribable singing of the army of the cherubim, and of the light without measure, to be an eyewitness. At that time, he said, when 165 years were complete for me, I fathered my son Methuselah, and after that I lived 200 years. I completed all the years of my life, 365 years. In the first month, on the assigned day of the first month, I was in my house alone, and I lay on my bed, sleeping. And while I slept, a great distress entered my heart, and I was weeping with my eyes in a dream. I could not figure out what this distress might be, nor what might be happening to me. Then two huge men appeared to me, the like of which I had never seen on earth. Their faces were like the shining sun. Their eyes were like burning lamps. From their mouths fire was coming forth. Their clothing was various singing. Their wings were more glistening than gold. Their hands were whiter than snow. And they stood at the head of my bed and called me by my name. Then I awoke from my sleep, and I saw those men standing in front of me, in actuality. Then I bowed down to them, and I was terrified, and the appearance of my face was changed because of fear. Then those men said to me, Be brave, Enoch. In truth, do not fear. The eternal God has sent us to you. Behold, you will ascend with us to heaven today. Tell your sons and all the members of your household everything that they must do in your house while they are without you on earth. Let no one search for you until the Lord returns you to them. I hurried and obeyed them. I went out of my house and shut the doors as I had been ordered. I called my sons, Methuselah and Regime and Gaidad, and I declared to them all the marvels that those men had told me. Enoch said, Listen, my children, I do not know where I am going, nor what will confront me. Now, my children, I say to you, do not turn away from God. Walk before his face and keep his commandments. Do not abhor the prayers of your salvation, so that the Lord will not curtail the work of your hands. Do not be ungenerous with the Lord's gifts, and the Lord will not be ungenerous with his donations and love gifts in your storehouses. Bless the Lord with the firstborn of your herds and the firstborn of your children, and a blessing will be on you forever. Do not turn away from the Lord, and do not worship vain gods, gods who did not create the heaven and the earth, or any other created thing, for they will perish, and so will those who worship them. And may God make your hearts true in reverence for him. And now, my children, no one must search for me until the Lord returns me to you. And it came about when I had spoken to my sons, those men called me, and they took me up onto their wings and carried me up to the first heaven and placed me on the clouds. And behold, they were moving. There I perceived the air higher up, and higher still I saw the ether. They placed me on the first heaven, and they showed me a vast ocean, much bigger than the earthly ocean. They showed me the two hundred angels who govern the stars, and the heavenly combinations. They fly with their wings and do the rounds of all the planets. There I perceived the treasuries of the snow and ice, and the angels who guard their terrible storehouses. Also, the treasury of the clouds from which they come out and go in. They showed me the treasuries of the dew, like olive oil. The appearance of its image was like every kind of earthly flower, only more numerous. 
and the angels who guard their treasuries, how they are shut and opened. Those men picked me up and brought me up to the second heaven. They showed me, and I saw a darkness greater than earthly darkness. There I perceived prisoners under guard, hanging up, waiting for the measureless judgment. Those angels had the appearance of darkness itself, more than earthly darkness. Unceasingly they made weeping all the day long. I said to the men who were with me, Why are these ones being tormented unceasingly? Those men answered me, These are those who turned away from the Lord, who did not obey the Lord's commandments, but of their own will plotted together, and turned away with their prince, and with those who were under restraint in the fifth heaven. I felt very sorry for them, and those angels bowed down to me and said to me, Man of God, pray for us to the Lord. And I answered and said, Who am I, a mortal man, that I should pray for angels? Who knows where I am going, or what will confront me, or who indeed will pray for me? And those men took me from there, and they brought me up to the third heaven, and set me down there. And I looked downward, and I saw paradise, and that place is inconceivably pleasant. I saw the trees in full flower, their fruits were ripe and pleasant smelling, with every food and yield, and giving off profusely a pleasant fragrance. In the midst of them was the tree of life, at that place where the Lord takes a rest when he goes into paradise. That tree is indescribable for the pleasantness and fine fragrance, and more beautiful than any other created thing that exists. From every direction it has an appearance which is gold-looking and crimson, and with the form of fire. It covers the whole of paradise and has something of every orchard tree and every fruit. Its root is in paradise, at the exit that leads to the earth. Paradise is in between the corruptible and the incorruptible. Two streams come forth, one a source of honey and milk, and one a source that produces oil and wine, and it is divided into four parts. They go round with a quiet movement, and they come out into the paradise of Eden, between the corruptible and the incorruptible. From there they go forth, along the earth. They have a revolution in their cycle, just like the other atmospheric elements. There is no unfruitful tree there. Every tree is well fruited, and every place is blessed. There are three hundred angels, very bright, who look after paradise, and with never-ceasing voice and pleasant singing they worship the Lord every day and hour. And I said, How very pleasant is this place! And those men said to me, This place, Enoch, has been prepared for the righteous, who suffer every kind of calamity in their life, and who afflict their souls, and who avert their eyes from injustice, and who carry out righteous judgment, and to give bread to the hungry, and to cover the naked with clothing, and who lift up the fallen, and who help the injured and the orphans, and who walk without a defect before the face of the Lord, and who worship Him only. Even for them this place has been prepared as an eternal inheritance. Those men carried me to the northern region, and they showed me there a very frightful place, and all kinds of torture and torments are in that place, cruel darkness and lightless gloom. There is no light there, and a black fire blazes up perpetually, with a river of fire that comes out over the whole place. Fire here, freezing ice there. It dries up and it freezes. There, there are very cruel places of detention, dark and merciless angels, carrying instruments of atrocities and torturing without pity. I said, Whoa, whoa, how very frightful this place is. Those men said to me, This place, Enoch, has been prepared for those who do not glorify God, and for those who practice on the earth the sin which is against nature, which is child corruption in the anus and the manner of Sodom, for those who practice witchcraft, enchantments, divinations, trafficking with demons, and who boast about their evil deeds, stealing, lying, 
insulting, coveting, resentment, fornication, and murder. For those who steal the souls of men secretly, seizing the poor by the throat, taking away their possessions, enriching themselves from the possessions of others, defrauding them when they are able to provide sustenance. For those who bring about the death of the hungry by starvation, and when they are able to provide clothing, take away the last garment of the naked. For those who do not acknowledge their Creator, but bow down to idols, which have no souls, which can neither see nor hear, vain gods, constructing images and bowing down to vile things made by hands, for all these this place has been prepared for an eternal reward. Those men then took me, and they carried me up to the fourth heaven. They showed me there all the movements and sequences and all the rays of solar and lunar light. I measured their movements and compared their light. And I saw that the sun has a light seven times greater than the moon. And I saw his circle and his wheels on which he always goes, going past always like the wind with quite marvelous speed. And his coming and his going give him no rest day and night. And I saw the four great stars on each side each star having one thousand stars under it, four on the right-hand side of the sun's chariot, and four on the left-hand side, each one having a thousand stars under it, altogether eight thousand, going with the sun perpetually. And one hundred fifty thousand angels accompany the sun in the daytime, and at night one thousand, and one hundred angels go in front of the sun's chariot, six-winged, in flaming fire, and the sun blazes up and sets the one hundred angels on fire. I looked and saw flying spirits, the solar elements called phoenixes and calchedras, strange and wonderful, for their form was that of a lion, and their head was that of a crocodile. Their appearance was multicolored, like a rainbow. Their size was nine hundred measures. Their wings were those of angels, but they have twelve wings each. They accompany and run with the sun, carrying heat and dew, and whatever is commanded them of God. Thus the sun goes through a cycle, and he goes down and he rises up across the sky and beneath the earth with the light of his rays, and the sun is there on the track unceasingly. And those men carried me away to the east of that heaven. And they showed me the solar gates through which the sun comes out according to the appointment of the seasons and according to the phases of the moon for the entire year and according to the numbers of the horologue day and night. I saw six open gates, each gate having sixty-one stadia and a quarter of a stadium. And I measured carefully and I figured out their size to be so much through which the sun comes out and goes off to the west. It becomes even and goes in through all of the months. The first gate, the sun comes out for 42 days. The second, 35 days. The third, 35 days. The fourth, 35 days. The fifth, 35 days. The sixth, 42 days. And then once more the sun does an about turn and goes back the other way from the sixth gate according to the round of the season. And the sun goes through the fifth gate thirty-five days, the fourth thirty-five days, the third thirty-five days, the second thirty-five days. And so the days of the whole year are completed according to the cycle of the four seasons. Then those men carried me away to the west of the heaven, and they showed me six large open gates corresponding to the circuit of the eastern gates opposite them, where the sun sets, according to the number of days, three hundred sixty-five and one quarter. Thus the sun goes back once again to the eastern gates, under the earth. And when the sun goes out from the western gates, he takes off his light, the splendor which is his radiance, and four hundred angels take his crown and carry it to the Lord, for since his shining crown is with God, with four hundred angels guarding it, the sun turns his chariot around and goes back under the earth on wheels, without the great light which is his great radiance and ornament. 
The sun remains for seven great hours in night, and the chariot spends half its time under the earth. And when he comes to the eastern approaches in the eighth hour of the night, the four hundred angels bring back the crown and crown him, and his brightness and the shining of his crown are seen before sunrise, and the sun blazes out more than fire does. Then the solar elements called phoenixes and calcedras burst into song. That is why every bird flaps its wings, rejoicing at the giver of light. They burst into song at the Lord's command. The light giver is coming to give radiance to the whole world. And the morning watch appears, which is the sun's rays. And the sun comes out over the face of the earth and retrieves his radiance to give light to all the face of the earth. They showed me the calculation of the sun's movement and the gates by which he goes in and out. For these are the great gates which God created to be an annual horologue. This is why the sun has the greater heat, and the cycle for him goes on for twenty-eight years, and begins once more from the start. And another calculation those men showed me, that of the moon. And all the movements and phases, and twelve big gates, crowned from the west to the east, through which the moon goes in and goes out, in accordance with the regular seasons. She goes in by the first western gate, in the place of the sun, by the first gate for thirty-one days exactly, the second for thirty-five days exactly, the third for thirty-one days exactly, the fourth for thirty days exactly, the fifth for thirty-one days extraordinarily, the sixth for thirty-one days exactly the seventh for thirty days exactly, the eighth for thirty-one days extraordinarily, the ninth for thirty-one days accurately, the tenth for thirty days exactly, the eleventh for thirty-one days exactly, the twelfth for twenty-two days exactly. Thus likewise by the western gates, in accordance with the cycle and in accordance with the number of eastern gates, Thus she goes in also by the western gates, and she completes the year, 364 days. The moon passes by the quarters for three years, and the fourth completes it exactly. For this reason they are taken away, outside heaven, for three years, and are not to be added to the number of days, because these ones change the seasons of the year, two new moons increasing, two others decreasing. And when the western gates are completed, she turns around and goes to the eastern ones with her light. Thus she goes, day and night, in accordance with the heavenly cycles, lower than all the cycles, swifter than the heavenly winds, spirits, elements, and flying angels, with six wings on each angel. The moon has a sevenfold intercalation and a period of revolution of nineteen years, and she begins once again from the start. In the middle of the heaven I saw armed troops, worshipping the Lord with tympani, pipes, unceasing and pleasant voices, accompanied with pleasant, unceasing and various songs, which is impossible to describe. Every mind would be quite astonished, so marvelous and wonderful is the singing of these angels. And I was delighted listening to them. And those men took me up on their wings and placed me on the fifth heaven, and I saw there many innumerable armies called Grigori. Their appearance was like the appearance of a human being, and their size was larger than that of large giants, and their faces were dejected, and the silence of their mouths was perpetual. And there was no liturgy in the fifth heaven. I then said to the men who were with me, What is the explanation that these ones are so very dejected, and their faces miserable, and their mouths silent. And why is there no liturgy in this heaven? And those men answered me, These are the Grigori who turned aside from the Lord, two hundred myriads, together with their prince Satanael. And similar to these are those who went down as prisoners in their train, who are in the second heaven, imprisoned in great darkness. And three of them descended to the earth from the Lord's throne onto the place Hermon, and they broke the promise on the shoulder of Mount Hermon. And they saw the daughters of men, how beautiful they were, 
and they took wives for themselves, and the earth was defiled by their deeds. They and the wives of men created great evil in the entire time of this age, acted lawlessly, and practiced miscegenation, and gave birth to giants, great monsters, and great enmity. And this is why God has judged them with a great judgment, and they mourn their brothers, and they will be outraged on the great day of the Lord. I said to the Gregory, I have seen your brothers, and their deeds, and their torments, and their great prayers, and I have prayed for them, but the Lord has sentenced them unto the earth until heaven and earth are ended forever. And I said, Why are you waiting for your brothers, and why don't you perform the liturgy before the face of the Lord? Start up your liturgy, and perform the liturgy before the face of the Lord, so that you do not enrage your Lord God to the limit. And they responded to my recommendation, and they stood in four regiments in this heaven. And behold, while I was standing with those men, four trumpets trumpeted in unison with a great sound, and the Gregory burst into singing in unison, and their voice rose in front of the face of the Lord, piteously and touchingly. Those men then took me from there, and they carried me up to the sixth heaven. There I saw seven groups of angels, brilliant and very glorious. Their faces were more radiant than the radiance of the sun, and there was no difference between their faces, or in their dimensions, or in the style of their clothing. These groups of angels carry out and carefully study the movements of the stars, the revolution of the sun and the phases of the moon, and the well-being of the cosmos. When they see any evil activity, they put the commandments and instructions in order, and the sweet choral singing, and every kind of glorious praise. These are the archangels who are over the angels. These archangels harmonize all existence, heavenly and earthly. The angels who are over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and the ocean, and the angels who are over the fruits of the earth and over every kind of grass, who give every kind of food to every kind of living thing. Also, the angels who record all human souls, all their deeds, and their lives before the face of the Lord. And in the midst of them are seven phoenixes, and seven cherubim, and seven six-winged beings, having but one voice, and singing in unison. Their song is not to be reported, and the Lord is delighted by his footstool. Those men lifted me up from there, and they carried me up to the seventh heaven, and I saw an exceptionally great light. And all the fiery armies of the great archangels, and the incorporeal forces, and the dominions, and the origins, and the authorities, the cherubim, and the seraphim, and the many-eyed thrones, the regiments, and the shining otanim stations, I was terrified, and I trembled with great fear. Those men then picked me up and led me into their midst and said to me, Be brave, Enoch, do not be frightened. They showed me the Lord from a distance, sitting on his exceedingly high throne. And what is on the tenth heaven, since the Lord is present there? And on the tenth heaven is God, and it is called in the Hebrew language, Erevoth. All the heavenly armies came and stood on the ten steps, corresponding to their ranks, and they did obeisance to the Lord. Then they went to their places, in joy, merriment, and in immeasurable light, singing songs with soft, gentle voices, while presenting the liturgy to him gloriously. They do not leave by night, nor depart by day, standing in front of the face of the Lord, and carrying out his will, cherubim and seraphim, standing all around his throne, six-winged and many-eyed. They cover his entire throne, singing with gentle voice in front of the face of the Lord, Holy, Holy, Holy! is God the Sovereign Lord. Heaven and earth are full of His glory. When I had seen all these things, those men said to me, Enoch, up to this point we have been commanded to travel with you. The men went away from me, and from then on I did not see them any more. But I remained alone at the edge of the seventh heaven. 
I became terrified and fell on my face and said to myself, Woe is me! What has happened to me? The Lord sent one of his glorious ones, the archangel Gabriel. He said to me, Be brave, Enoch. Do not be frightened. Stand up. Come with me and stand in front of the face of the Lord forever. I answered him and I said, Woe to me, my Lord! My soul has departed from me from fear and horror. Call the two men who brought me to this place because I have put my confidence in them and with them I will go before the face of the Lord. Gabriel picked me up like a leaf carried by the wind. He moved me along and put me down in front of the face of the Lord. And I saw the eighth heaven, which is called in the Hebrew language Musaloth the changer of the seasons, of dry and of wet, and the twelve zodiacs, which were above the seventh heaven. I saw the ninth heaven, which in the Hebrew language is called Kukavim, where the heavenly houses of the twelve zodiacs are. And on the tenth heaven, Avaroth, I saw the view of the face of the Lord, like iron made burning hot in a fire and brought out, and it emits sparks and is incandescent. Thus, even I saw the face of the Lord. But the face of the Lord is not to be talked about. It is supremely marvelous, supremely awesome, and supremely frightening. And who am I to give an account of the inexpressible being of the Lord and of his face, so extremely strange and indescribable? How many are his commands, his multiple voice? The Lord's throne, supremely great and not made by hands. The choir stalls all around him, the cherubim and the seraphim armies, and their never silent singing. Who can give an account of his beautiful appearance, never changing and indescribable, and his great glory? I fell down flat and did obeisance to the Lord, and the Lord with his own mouth said to me, Be brave, Enoch, do not be frightened. Stand up and stand in front of my face forever. Michael, the Lord's architect, lifted me up and brought me in front of the face of the Lord. And the Lord said to his servants, sounding them out, Let Enoch join in and stand in front of my face forever. And the Lord's glorious ones did obeisance and said, Let Enoch yield in accordance with your word, O Lord. And the Lord said to Michael, Go and extract Enoch from his earthly clothing. Anoint him with my delightful oil and put him into the clothes of my glory. So Michael did just as the Lord said to him. He anointed me, and he clothed me. The appearance of that oil is greater than the greatest light, and its ointment is like sweet dew, and its fragrance myrrh. It is like the rays of the glittering sun. I looked at myself, and I had become like one of his glorious ones, and there was no observable difference. The Lord summoned one of his archangels, Vrevoil by a name, who was swifter in wisdom than the other archangels, and who records all the Lord's deeds. The Lord said to Vrevoil, Bring out the books from my storehouses, and fetch a pen for speed writing, and give it to Enoch, and read him all the books. Vrevoil hurried and brought me the books, a knife and ink, he gave me the pen for speed writing from his hand. He was telling me all the things of heaven, the earth, sea, and all the elements, and the movements and their courses, of the living thunder, the sun, the moon, the stars, their courses and their changes, seasons, years, days, hours, the coming of the clouds, the blowing of the winds, the number of the angels, and the songs of the armed troops, of every kind of human thing, every kind of language, singing, human life, rules, instructions, sweet-voiced singing, and everything that is appropriate to learn. Brevoil instructed me for thirty days and thirty nights. His mouth never stopped speaking, and as for me, I did not rest, writing all the symbols and all the creatures. When I had finished thirty days and thirty nights, Vrevoil said to me, These things, whatever I have taught you, whatever you have learned, whatever you have written down, 
you sit down and write, All the souls of men, whatever of them are not yet born, and their places prepared for eternity. For all the souls are prepared for eternity before the composition of the earth. I sat down for a second period of thirty days and thirty nights, and I wrote down everything accurately. I wrote 366 books. The Lord called me and said to me, Enoch, sit to the left of me with Gabriel. And I did obeisance to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved, whatever you see and whatever things are standing still or moving about were brought to perfection by me. I myself will explain it to you. Before anything existed at all, from the very beginning, whatever exists, I created from the non-existent. And from the invisible, the visible. Listen, Enoch, pay attention to these words of mine. For not even to my angels have I explained my secrets, nor related to them their origin, nor my endlessness and inconceivableness as I devised the creatures, as I am making them known to you today. For before any visible things had come into existence, I, the One, moved around in the invisible things, like the sun, from the east to the west, and from the west to the east. But the sun has rest in himself, yet I did not find rest, because everything was not yet created. I thought up the idea of establishing a foundation to create a visible creation. I commanded the very highest things, let one of the invisible things descend visibly, and at a will descended, extremely large. I looked at him, and behold, in his belly he had a great light. I said to him, Disintegrate yourself, at a will, and let what is born from you become visible. And he disintegrated himself, and there came out a very great light. I was in the midst of the great light, and light out of light it carries thus. And the great age came out, and it revealed all the creation which I had thought up to create. And I saw how good it was. I placed for myself a throne and sat down on it. Then to the light I spoke. You, go up higher than the throne, and be solidified much higher than the throne, and become the foundation for the highest things. There was nothing higher than the light except nothing itself. And again I bowed myself, and I looked upward from my throne. I called out a second time into the very lowest things, and I said, Let one of the invisible things come out visibly, solid. And Arcos came out, solid, heavy, and very black. I said, Open yourself up, Arcos, and let what is born from you become visible. And he disintegrated himself. There came out an age, dark, very large, carrying the creation of all lower things and I saw how good it was. I said to him, Come down low and become solid, and become the foundation of the lowest things. And it came about, and he came down, and he became solid, and he became the foundations of the very lowest things. And there is nothing lower than the darkness except nothing itself. I gave the command, Let there be taken some of the light and some of the darkness, and it became thickened. It became water, and I spread it out. Thus I made the waters, that is to say, the bottomless, and I saw how good it was. I made a division between the light and the darkness. I said to the light that it should be day, and to the darkness I commanded that it should be night. And evening came, and again morning came, that is, the first day. And I said, let the lower water, which is below heaven, collect itself into one collection, and let its waves become dry, and it happened like that. From the waves I created rocks, solid and big. From the rocks I assembled the dry land, and I called the dry land earth. What was in the middle of the earth I called chasm. The sea gathered into one place, and I bound it with a yoke, and I said to the sea, Behold, I give you an eternal boundary. You will not break through your own waters. So I fixed the solid structure. The first created day I named for myself. 
Then evening came, and again morning, and it was the second day. And for all my own heavens, I shaped the shape from the fiery substance. My eye looked at the solid and very hard rock. From the flash of my eye, I took the marvelous substance of lightning, both fire in water and water in fire. Neither does this one extinguish that one, nor does that one dry out this one. This is why lightning is sharper and brighter than the shining of the sun, and softer than water, more solid than the hardest rock. From the rock I cut off a great fire, and from the fire I created the ranks of the bodiless armies, ten myriad angels. Their weapons are fiery, and their clothes are burning flames. I gave orders that each should stand in his own rank. Lucifer, one of the order of the archangels, deviated, together with the division that was under his authority. He thought of the impossible idea that he might place his throne higher than the clouds which are above the earth, and that he might become equal to my power. I hurled him out from the height, together with his angels, and he was flying around in the air ceaselessly above the bottomless. Thus I created the entire heavens, and the third day came. On the third day I commanded the earth to make trees grow, large and fruit-bearing, and the mountains, and all kinds of sweet grass, and all kinds of sown seed. I laid out paradise as a garden, and I enclosed it. Thus I created the renewal of the earth. Then evening came, and morning came, the fourth day. On the fourth day I commanded, Let there be great lamps on the heavenly circles. I created seven great circles, and gave them an appearance of crystal, wet and dry, and for it to be a circuit for water and the other elements. I pointed out to each one of them his route, to the seven stars, each one of them in his own heaven, so that they might travel accordingly. Thus I made solid the heavenly circles. On the first, the highest circle, I placed the star Saturn. On the second, lower down, I placed Jupiter. On the third, Mars. On the fourth, the Sun. On the fifth, Venus, on the sixth, Mercury, and on the seventh, the lowest, the moon. With the lowest stars, I beautified the air below. I appointed the sun over the illumination of the day, but the moon and the stars over the illumination of the night. The sun goes in accordance with each animal, and the twelve animals are the succession of the months. I assigned their names the animals of their seasons, their connection with the newborn, and how they revolve. Then evening came, and morning came, the fifth day. On the sixth day I commanded my wisdom to create man out of the seven components. First, his flesh from the earth. Second, his blood from dew and from the sun. Third, his eyes from the bottomless sea. Fourth, his bones from stone. Fifth, his reason from the mobility of angels and from clouds. Sixth, his veins and his hair from grass of the earth. Seventh, his spirit from my spirit and from wind. I gave him seven properties, hearing to the flesh, sight to the eyes, smell to the spirit, touch to the veins, taste to the blood, and to the bones endurance, to the reason sweetness. Behold, I have thought up a poem to recite. From invisible and visible substances I created man. From both his natures came both life and death. As my image, he knows the word like no other creature, but even in his greatest he is small, and again, at his smallest, he is great. On the earth, I assigned him to be a second angel, honored, great, and glorious. I assigned him to be a king, to reign on the earth, and to have my wisdom. There was nothing comparable to him on the earth, even among my creatures that exist. I assigned him a name from the four components, from the east, A, from the west, D. From the north, 
A. From the South, M. I assigned him four special stars and called his name Adam. I gave him his free will. I pointed out to him the two ways, light and darkness. I said to him, This is good for you, but that is bad, so that I might come to know whether he has love toward me or abhorrence so that it might become plain who among his race loves me. Whereas I have come to know his nature, he does not know his own nature. This is why ignorance is more lamentable than the sin, such as it is in him to sin. And I said, After sin there is nothing for it but death. I assigned a shade for him. I imposed sleep upon him, and he fell asleep. While he was sleeping, I took from him a rib. I created for him a wife, so that life might come to him by his wife. I called her name Mother, that is to say, Eve. Adam, Mother, Earthly and Life. I created a garden in Eden, in the east, so that he might keep the agreement and preserve the commandment. I created for him an open heaven, so that he might look upon the angels, singing in triumphal song. The light, which is never darkened, was perpetually in paradise. The devil understood how I wished to create another world, so that everything could be subjected to Adam on the earth, to rule and reign over it. The devil is of the lowest places. Lucifer has become a demon, because he fled from heaven. In this way he became different from the angels. His nature did not change, but his thought did, since his consciousness of righteous and sinful things changed. Lucifer became aware of his condemnation and of the sin he sinned previously. This is why he thought up the scheme against Adam. In such a form he entered paradise and corrupted Eve, but Adam he did not contact. On account of her ignorance, I cursed the ground and the serpent. I did not curse mankind nor any other creature, but only mankind's evil fruit-bearing. This is why the fruit of doing good is sweat and exertion. I said to him, You are earth, and into the earth once again you will go, out of which I took you. I will not destroy you, but I will send you away to what I took you from. Then I can take you once again at my second coming. I blessed all my creatures, visible and invisible. I blessed the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in which I rested from all my doings. On the eighth day I likewise appointed, so that the eighth day might be the first, the first created of the week, and that it should revolve in a revolution of seven thousand, so that eight thousand might be in the beginning of a time not reckoned and ending. Neither years, nor months, nor weeks, nor days, nor hours, like the first day of the week. So also that the eighth day of the week might return continually. Now Enoch, whatever I have told you, whatever you have understood, whatever you have seen in the heavens, whatever you have seen on the earth, and whatever I have written in the books by my supreme wisdom, all these things I plan to accomplish. I created them from the highest foundation to the lowest and to the end. There is no advisor and no successor to my creation. I am self-eternal, not made by hands. My thought is without change. My wisdom is my advisor, and my deed is my word. My eyes look at all things. And if I look at all things, then they stand still and shake with terror. But if I should turn my face away, then all things would perish. Apply your mind, Enoch, and acknowledge the one who is speaking to you. You take the books which you yourself have written. I give you Samuela and Raguila, who brought you up here to me. Go down onto the earth. Tell your sons all that I have told you and everything that you have seen, from the lowest heavens up to my throne. For I created all the armies and all the forces. There is no one who opposes me, or who is insubordinate to me. For all submit themselves to my sole rule and work, my sole dominion. 
give them the books of your handwriting. They will read them and they will acknowledge me as the creator of everything. They will understand that there is no other God than myself. Let them distribute the books in your handwriting, children to children, family to family, and kinsfolk to kinsfolk. I will give you, Enoch, a defender, my architrate Michael, on account of your handwritings and the handwritings of your fathers, Adam and Seth. They will not be destroyed until the final age. I have commanded my angels, Arioch and Marioch, whom I have appointed on the earth to guard them and to command the things of time to preserve the handwritings of your fathers, so that they might not perish in the impending flood which I will create in your generation. For I know the wickedness of mankind, how they have rejected my commandments, and they will not carry the yoke which I have placed on them. They cast off my yoke, and they will accept a different yoke. Nor do they sow the seed which I have given them, but they will sow worthless seed, not fearing God and not worshiping me. But they began to worship vain gods, and they renounced my uniqueness. They will reject my soul rule, and all the world will sin by injustices, crimes, adulteries, and idolatries. All the world will be reduced to confusion by iniquities, wickedness, and abominable fornications, that is, friend with friend in the anus, and every other kind of wicked uncleanness, which is disgusting to report, and the worship of the evil one. This is why I shall bring down the flood onto the earth. I shall destroy everything, and the earth will collapse in great darkness. I will leave a righteous man from your tribe together with all his house, who will act in accordance with my will. From his seed another generation will arise, the last of many. But even out of those the majority will be very insatiable. I shall raise up for that generation someone who will reveal to them the books in your handwriting and those of your fathers. He will have you point out to them the guard tower of the earth. Truthful men and those who carry out my will, who do not invoke my name misleadingly. You will tell that generation, and they, when they have read them, will be more glorified in the end than in the beginning. And now, Enoch, I am giving you a respite period of thirty days to set your house in order, to instruct your sons and all the members of your household about everything from me, personally, so that they may obey what is said to them by you. They will read and understand that there is no other God apart from myself, so that they may carry out all your instructions and study the books in your handwriting accurately and attentively. After thirty days I will send for you my angel. He will take you up from the earth and from your sons to me. The Lord called one of the senior angels, terrifying and frightful, and he made him stand with me. The appearance of that angel was as white as snow, his hands like ice, having the appearance of great frigidity. He chilled my face because I could not endure the terror of the Lord, just as it is not possible to endure the fire of the stove and the heat of the sun and the frost of death. The Lord said to me, Enoch, if your face had not been chilled here, no human being would be able to look at your face. The Lord said to those men who had brought me up at the first, Let Enoch descend unto the earth with you. Wait for him until the specified day. They placed me at night time in my bed. Methuselah was anticipating my arrival, mounting strict guard at my bed. He was terrified when he heard my arrival. I said to him, Let all the members of my household come down. Then I said to them, O oh, my children, my beloved ones, give heed, my children, to the admonition of your father, to whatever is in accordance with the will of the Lord. I have been sent today to you from the lips of the Lord, to speak to you whatever has been, whatever is now, and whatever will be until the day of judgment. Listen, my children, for it is not from my own lips that I am reporting to you today, but from the lips of the Lord I have been sent to you. 
For you hear my words out of my lips. Out of my lips a human being created exactly equal to yourselves. But I have heard from the fiery lips of the Lord. For the lips of the Lord are a furnace of fire, and his angels are flames which come out. But you, my children, see my face as a human being, created exactly like yourselves. But I am one who has seen the face of the Lord, like iron made burning hot by a fire, and it is brought out, and it emits sparks, and it is incandescent. You gaze into my eyes as a human being, equal in significance as yourself. But I have gazed into the eyes of the Lord, shining like the rays of the sun, and terrifying the eyes of a human being. But you, my children, see the right hand of one who helps you, a human being created identical to yourselves. But I have seen the right hand of the Lord, helping me and filling heaven. You see the scope of my activity, the same as your own, but I have seen the scope of the Lord, without limit and without analogy, and to which there is no end. You hear the saying of my lips, but I have heard the Lord speaking loud like thunder when there is a continual disturbance in the clouds. And now, my children, listen to the discourses of your earthly father. Frightening and dangerous it is to stand before the face of an earthly king. Terrifying and very dangerous it is, because the will of the king is death, and the will of the king is life. How much more terrifying and dangerous it is to stand before the face of the king of earthly kings, and of the heavenly armies, the regulator of the living and of the dead. Who can endure that endless distress? Now therefore, my children, I know everything, for either from the lips of the Lord, or else my eyes have seen from the beginning even unto the end, and from the end to the recommencement. I know everything, and everything I have written down in books, the heavens, their boundaries, and their contents, all the armies and their movements I have measured. I have recorded the stars, the multitude of multitudes, innumerable, what human being can see their cycles and their phases? For not even the angels know their number, but I have written down all their names. The solar circle I have measured, its rays I have counted, the hours I have counted, its entrances and all the months, its departures, and all its movements, their names I have written down. The lunar cycle I have measured its movements, which are in accordance with each day, the diminution which it undergoes during each day and night, in accordance with the hours. The four seasons were appointed. From the seasons the four cycles were created, and in the cycles the year was appointed. The months were appointed, and from the months I counted days, and from the days I measured off the hours. I counted them and wrote them down. Everything that is nourished on the earth I have investigated and written down. Every seed, sown and not sown, which grows from the earth, all the garden plants, all the grasses, all the flowers, their delightful fragrances and names. The dwelling places of the clouds, their organization and their wings, how they carry the rain and the raindrops, all this I investigated. I wrote down the rumble of the thunder and the lightning, and they showed me the keys of their keepers, the places where they go, where they go in and where they go out, by measure. They are raised by means of a chain, they are lowered by means of a chain, so that they do not pull the clouds away and do not cause what is on the earth to perish. I wrote down the treasuries of the snow, the storehouses of the cold, and the frosty wind. I observed how, depending in the season, their custodians fill up with them, and their treasuries are not emptied. I wrote down the sleeping chambers of the winds. I observed and saw how their custodians carry scales and measures. First, they place them in the scales. Secondly, in the measure. It is by measure that they release them skillfully into all the earth, lest the earth should be rocked by violent gusts. I measured all the earth, 
its mountains, hills, fields, woods, stones, rivers, and everything that exists. I wrote down the height from the earth to the seventh heaven, the depth of the lowermost hell, the place of condemnation, and the supremely large hell, open and weeping. I saw how the prisoners were in pains, looking forward to endless punishment. I recorded all those who had been condemned by the judge, all their sentences, and all their corresponding deeds. I saw all those from the age of my ancestors with Adam and Eve. I sighed and burst into tears. I said concerning their disreputable depravity, Oh, how miserable for me is my incapacity and in that of my ancestors. And I thought in my heart, and I said, How blessed is the person who has not been born, who has not sinned before the face of the Lord, so that he will not come into this place, nor carry the yoke of this place. I saw the key holders and the guards of the gates of hell standing as large as serpents, with their faces like lamps that have been extinguished, and their eyes aflame, and their teeth naked down to their breasts. I said to their faces, It would have been better if I had not seen you, nor heard about your activities, nor that any member of my tribe had been brought to you. To what a small extent they have sinned in this life, but in the eternal life they will suffer forever. I ascended to the east, into the paradise of Eden, where rest is prepared for the righteous. It is open as far as the third heaven, but it is closed off from this world. The guards are appointed at the very large gates to the east of the sun, angels of flame, singing victory songs, never silent, rejoicing at the arrival of the righteous. When the last one will arrive, he will bring out Adam together with the ancestors. He will bring them in there, so that they may be filled with joy, just as a person invites his best friends to have dinner with him and they arrive with joy. They talk together in front of the man's place, waiting in joyful anticipation to have dinner with delightful enjoyments and riches that cannot be measured, joy and happiness in eternal light and life. I say to you, my children, happy is the person who reverences the name of the Lord, who serves him in front of his face always, who organizes the gifts with fear, offerings of life, and who in this life lives and dies correctly. Happy is he who carries out righteous judgment, not for the sake of payment, but for justice, not expecting anything whatever as a result. The result will be that judgment without favoritism will follow for him. Happy is he who clothes the naked with his garment, and to the hungry he gives his bread. Happy is he who judges righteous judgment for orphan and widow, and who helps anyone who has been treated unjustly. Happy is he who turns aside from the short-lived path of this vain world, and walks in the right paths, and who lives that life which is without end. Happy is he who sows right seed for he shall harvest sevenfold. Happy is he in whom is the truth, so that he may speak the truth to his neighbor. Happy is he who has compassion on his lips and gentleness in his heart. Happy is he who understands all the works of the Lord, performed by the Lord, and glorifies him. For the works of the Lord are right, but the works of mankind, some are good, but others are evil. By their works, those who speak lying blasphemies are recognized. My children, every just deed, every just decree, every just decision, I have checked out and written down, just as the Lord commanded me. In all these things, I have discovered differences. For just as one year is more honorable than another year, so one person is more honorable than another person. Some, because of much property, some again because of wisdom of the heart, some again because of singular intelligence, some again because of craftiness, some again because of silence of the lips, some again because of purity, some again because of strength, some again because of handsome appearance, some again because of youth, 
Some again because of a penetrating mind. Some again because of bodily appearance. Some again because of abundant feelings. Even though these things are heard on every side, nevertheless there is no one better than he who fears God. He will be the most glorious of that age. The Lord with his own two hands created mankind. In a facsimile of his own face, both small and great, the Lord created them. Whoever insults a person's face insults the face of a king and treats the face of the Lord with repugnance. He who treats with contempt the face of any person treats the face of the Lord with contempt. He who expresses anger to any person without provocation will reap anger in the great judgment. He who spits on any person's face insultingly will reap the same at the day of the Lord's great judgment. Happy is the person who does not direct his heart with malice toward any person, but who helps the offended and the condemned, and lifts up those who have been crushed, and shows compassion on the needy, because on the day of the great judgment every weight and every measure and every set of scales will be just as they are in the market. That is to say, each will be weighed in the balance, and each will stand in the market, and each will find out his own measure, and in accordance with that measurement each shall receive his own reward. If anyone is prompt in performing a good offering in front of the face of the Lord, then the Lord will also be prompt to accept it on his account, and he will be prompt in his compensations. If anyone makes lamps numerous in front of the face of the Lord, then the Lord will make his treasure storehouse numerous in the highest kingdom. Does the Lord demand bread or lamps or sheep or oxen or any kind of sacrifices at all? That is nothing. But God demands pure hearts. By means of all those things, he tests people's hearts. Listen, my people, and give heed to the utterance of my lips. If to an earthly king someone should bring some kind of gifts, if he is thinking treachery in his heart, and the king perceives it, will not the king be angry with him, and will not he spurn his gifts? Will the king not hand him over for judgment? If any person seduces another person into untruth by fair speech, but his heart is evil, will he not be conscious of the treachery of his heart, and will he not judge himself in himself? whether or not his judgment be true, how his untruthfulness is obvious to everyone. When the Lord sends out the great light, in that light there will be true judgment, without favoritism, for true and untrue alike, and no one will be able to hide himself then. And now, my children, place the thoughts in your hearts, and give heed to the sayings of your Father, which I am making known to you from the lips of the Lord. Receive these books in your father's handwriting and read them. For the books are many, and in them you will learn all the deeds of the Lord. There have been many books since the beginning of creation, and there will be until the end of the age. But not one of them will make things as plain to you as the books in my handwriting. If you hold on firmly to them, you will not sin against the Lord. For there is no other besides the Lord, neither in heaven, nor on the earth, nor in the deepest places, nor in the one foundation. The Lord is the one who laid the foundations upon the unknown things, and he is the one who spread out the heavens above the visible and the invisible things. The earth he solidified above the waters, and the waters he based upon the unfixed things, and he alone created the uncountable creatures, and who is it who has counted the dust of the earth, or the sand of the sea, or the drops of rain, or the dew of the clouds, or the blowing of the wind? Who is it who has plated the land and the sea, together with indissoluble bonds, who caused the unknowable beauty of the stars to spring forth from the fire, and with them has adorned the sky, and put in the midst of them the sun, so that he might travel along the seven celestial circles, which are appointed with 182 thrones, so that he might descend to the shortest day, and once more 182, so that he might descend to the longest day. 
He also has two great thrones where he pauses when he turns around in this direction and in the other direction, higher than the lunar thrones. From the month Sivan, from the seventeenth day he descends until the month of Thevet, and from the seventeenth day of Thevet he ascends. In this way the sun moves along all the celestial circles. When he comes close to the earth, then the earth is merry and makes its fruit grow. But when he goes away, then the earth laments, and the trees and all fruits have no productivity. All this is by measurement, and by the most precise measurement of the hours. He fixed it by measure, by his own wisdom, that is everything visible and invisible. From the invisible things and the visible things, he created all the visible things and he himself is invisible. Thus I am making it known to you, my children, and you must hand over all the books to your children throughout all your generations and to your relatives and among all nations who are discerning so that they may fear God and so that they may accept them. They will be more enjoyable than any delightful food on earth. They will read them and adhere to them. But those who are undiscerning and who do not understand the Lord, neither fear God nor accept them, but renounce them, and regard themselves burdened by them. A terrible judgment is awaiting them. Happy is the person who puts their yoke on and carries it around, for he will plow on the great day of judgment. I am swearing to you, my children, but look, I am not swearing by my oath at all, neither by heaven, nor by earth, nor by any other creature which the Lord created. For the Lord said, There is no oath in me, nor any unrighteousness, but only truth. So if there is no truth in human beings, then let them make an oath by means of the words, Yes, yes, or if it should be the other way round, No, no. I make an oath to you, Yes, yes that even before any person was in his mother's womb, individually a place he prepared for each soul, as well as a set of scales and a measurement of how long he intends him to live in this world, so that each person may be investigated with it. Yes, children, do not deceive yourselves, for ahead of the time a place has been prepared there for each human soul. I have set down the achievements of each person in the writings, and no one can hide himself who was born on the earth, nor can his achievement be kept secret. I see everything as if in a mirror. Now therefore, my children, impatience and meekness abide for the number of your days, so that you may inherit the final, endless age that is coming. Every assault, every persecution, and every evil word endure for the sake of the Lord. If the injury and persecution happen to you on account of the Lord, then endure them all for the sake of the Lord. If you are able to take vengeance with a hundredfold revenge, do not take vengeance, neither on one who is close to you, nor one who is distant from you. For the Lord is the one who takes vengeance, and he will be the avenger for you on the day of the great judgment, so that there may be no acts of retribution here from human beings but only from the Lord. Let each of you put up with the loss of his gold and silver on account of a brother, so that he may receive a full treasury in that age. Stretch out your hands to the needy in accordance with your ability. Do not hide your silver in the earth. Help a believer in affliction, and then affliction will not find you in your treasuries and in the time of your work. Every kind of afflictive and burdensome yoke if it comes upon you for the sake of the Lord, carry everything, and thus you will find your reward on the day of judgment. In the morning of the day, in the middle of the day, and in the evening of the day, it is good to go to the Lord's temple on account of the glory of your Creator. For every kind of spirit glorifies Him, and every kind of creature, visible and invisible, praises Him. Happy is the person who opens his lips for praise of the Lord, and praises him with his whole heart. And cursed is every person who opens his heart for insulting, insults the poor, slanders his neighbor, because that person slanders God. 
Happy is the person who opens their lips, both blessing and praising God. Cursed is the person who opens their lips for cursing and blasphemy before the face of the Lord all their days. Happy is the person who blesses all the works of the Lord. Cursed is the person who despises any of the Lord's creatures. Happy is the person who looks carefully to the raising of the works of their own hand. Cursed is the person who looks, is jealous, and works to destroy the works of another. Happy is the person who preserves the foundations of his most ancient fathers, made firm from the beginning. Cursed is the person who breaks down the institutions of his ancestors and fathers. Happy is the person who cultivates the love of peace. Cursed is the person who disturbs those who are peaceful by means of love. Happy is he, even though he does not speak peace with his tongue, nevertheless in his heart there is peace toward all. Cursed is the person who with his tongue speaks peace, but in his heart there is no peace but a sword. For all these things will be weighed in the balances and exposed in the books on the great day of judgment. So now, my children, do not say, Our Father is with God, and he will stand in front of God for us, and he will pray for us concerning our sins. For there is no helper there, not even for one person who has sinned. See how I have written down all the deeds of every person before the creation, and I am writing down what is done among all persons forever. No one can contradict my handwriting, because the Lord sees all the evil thoughts of mankind, how vain they are, where they lie in the treasuries of the heart. So now, my children, pay close attention to all your father's sayings. Whatever I say to you, so that you will not be sorry, saying, our Father warned us at that time about this ignorance of ours, so that there may be peace for you in your inheritance. The books which I have given you, do not hide them. To all who wish, recite them, so that they may know about the extremely marvelous works of the Lord. Behold, my children, the prescribed day has arrived. The appointed time confronts me. It urges me on to my departure from you. The angels who wish to go with me are standing on the earth, waiting for what they have been told. For tomorrow morning I shall go up to the highest Jerusalem, into my eternal inheritance. That is why I am commanding you, my children, so that you may do all that is well-pleasing before the face of the Lord. Methuselah answered his father and said, what is pleasing in your eyes, Father, so that we may prepare food in front of your face, so that you may bless our houses, your children, and all your household, and your people will be glorified by you. Thus, after that you will go away, as the Lord wills. Enoch answered his son, Methuselah, and said, Listen, child, since the time when the Lord anointed me with the ointment of his glory, food is not come into me. And earthly pleasure my soul does not remember, nor do I desire anything earthly. But, my child Methuselah, call all your brothers, all the members of your households, and the elders of the people, so that I may speak to them and depart, as it has been predetermined for me. Methuselah hurried and summoned his brothers, Rajim, Rimon, Ukan, Kermion, Gaidad, and the elders of all the people, he summoned them before the face of his father Enoch, and they prostrated themselves in front of his face. And Enoch looked at them, and he blessed them, and he spoke to them, saying, Listen to me, my children, today. In the days of our father Adam, the Lord came down unto the earth on account of Adam. He inspected all his creatures, which he himself created in the beginning of the thousand ages, and went after all those he had created Adam. The Lord summoned all the animals of the earth, all the reptiles of the earth, and all the birds that fly in the air, and he brought them all before the face of our father Adam, so that he may pronounce names for all the quadrupeds. And Adam named everything that lives on the earth. The Lord appointed him over everything as king. He subjected everything to him in subservience under his hand, both the dumb and the deaf, to be commanded, and for submission, and for every servitude. 
so also to every human being. The Lord created mankind to be the Lord of all his possessions, and the Lord will not judge a single animal soul for the sake of man, but human souls he will judge for the sake of the souls of their animals. For the souls of all the beasts there is in the great age a single place, a single paddock, and a single pasture. Just as every human soul is according to number, so also it is with animal souls. And not a single soul which the Lord has created will perish until the great judgment. And every kind of animal soul will accuse the human beings who have fed them badly. He who acts lawlessly with the soul of an animal acts lawlessly with his own soul. For a person brings one of the clean animals to make sacrifice on account of sin, so that he may have healing for his soul. If he brings it to the sacrifice from clean animals and birds and cereals, then there is healing for that person, and he will heal his soul. Everything that has been given to you for food bind by four legs, so as to perform the healing properly. There is healing, and he will heal his soul. He who puts to death any kind of animal without bonds puts his own soul to death and acts lawlessly with his own flesh. He who does any kind of harm to any kind of animal in secret, it is an evil custom, and he acts lawlessly with his own soul. He who does harm to a human soul creates harm for his own soul, and there is for him no healing in his flesh, nor any forgiveness for eternity. He who carries out the murder of a human soul causes the death of his own soul and murders his own body, and there is no healing for him for eternity. He who lies in wait for a person with any kind of trap, he himself will be entangled in it, and there is no healing for him for eternity. He who lies in wait for a person in judgment, his retribution will not be slackened in the great judgment for eternity. He who acts perversely or says anything against any soul, righteousness will not be created for him for eternity. So now, my children, keep your hearts from every unrighteous deed, which the Lord hates. Just as a person makes requests for his own soul from God, in the same manner let him behave toward every living soul, because in the great age I will find out everything. Many shelters have been prepared for people. Good ones for the good, but bad ones for the bad. Many, without number. Happy is he who enters into the blessed houses, for in the bad one there is no rest, nor returning. Listen, my children, old and young. A person, when he places a vow upon his heart to bring gifts before the face of the Lord from his own works, and his hands did not make that thing, then the Lord will turn away his face from the works of his hands, and he will not find the works of his hands. But even if his hands did make it, but his heart is complaining, the illness of his heart will not cease. Making complaint without ceasing, he shall not even have a single benefit. Happy is the person who, in his suffering, brings his gifts with faith before the face of the Lord and sacrifices them and receives remission of sins. But if before the time comes he should retract his vows, there is no repentance for him. If the time specified elapses, and then he does it, he will not be accepted, because every delay causes a scandal. A person, when he clothes the naked or gives his bread to the hungry, then he will obtain a reward from God. If his heart should murmur, it is a twofold evil that he creates for himself. It is a loss that he creates in respect to that which he gives and he will not have any obtaining or remuneration because of it. The poor man, when his heart is satisfied or his body is clothed, and he performs an act of contempt, then he will ruin all his endurance of poverty. He will not obtain the reward for his good deeds. For the Lord detests every kind of contemptuous person, and every person who makes himself out to be great, and every untruthful word stimulated by injustice. It will be cut off with the blade of the sword of death and thrown into the fire. It will burn, and this cutting out has no healing unto eternity. When Enoch had spoken these words to his sons, to the princes of the people, and all his people, near and far, having heard that the Lord was calling Enoch, 
they consulted one another, saying, Let us go, let us kiss Enoch. And they came together, up to two thousand men, and they arrived at the place at Cusan, where Enoch was, and his sons. The elders of the people and all the community came and prostrated themselves and kissed Enoch. They said to him, O oh, our father Enoch, may you be blessed by the Lord, the eternal King. Now bless your sons and all the people, so that we may be glorified in front of your face today. For you will be glorified in front of the face of the Lord for eternity, because you are the one whom the Lord chose in preference to all the people upon the earth. And he appointed you to be the one who makes a written record of all his creation, visible and invisible, the helper of your own household. And Enoch answered his people, saying to all of them, Listen, my children, before anything existed, and before ever any created thing was created, the Lord created his whole creation, visible and invisible. However, how much time there was that went by, Understand how, on account of this, he constituted man in his own form, in accordance with the similarity. He gave him eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to think, reason to argue. The Lord set everything forth for the sake of man, and he created the whole creation for his sake, and he divided it into times. From time he established years, from the years he settled months. From the months he settled the days, from the days he settled seven. And it is in those he settled the hours, and the hours he measured exactly. So that a person might think about time, so that he might count the years, the months, the days, the hours, the perturbations, the beginnings, the endings, and that he might keep count of his own life from the beginning unto death, think about his sins, so that he might write down his achievement, both good and evil. For no achievement is hidden in front of the Lord, so that every person might know his own achievement, so that he might not transgress any one of his commandments at all, so that he might hold on to what my hand has written, from generation to generation. When the whole of creation, visible and invisible, which the Lord has created, shall come to an end, then each person will go to the Lord's great judgment. Then all time will perish. Afterwards there will be neither years, nor months, nor days, nor hours. They will be dissipated. After that they will not be reckoned. They will constitute a single age. All the righteous who escape from the Lord's great judgment will be collected together into the great age. The great age will come about for the righteous, and it will be eternal. After that, there will be among them neither weariness, nor sickness, nor affliction, nor worry, nor want, nor debilitation, nor night, nor darkness, but they will have a great light, a great indestructible light, paradise, great and incorruptible, for everything corruptible will pass away, and the incorruptible will come into being, and it will be the shelter of the eternal residences. Now therefore, sons, guard your souls from every kind of injustice, such as the Lord hates. Walk in front of his face with fear, trembling, and worship him alone. To the true God bow down, not to idols, which have no voice. Every kind of oblation present justly in front of the face of the Lord. But what is unjust, the Lord detests. For the Lord sees everything that a person thinks in his heart. Then reason advises him. For every thought is presented before the Lord, who made the earth firm and settled creatures upon it. If you look upon the sky, behold, the Lord is there. For the Lord created the sky. If you look upon the earth, then the Lord is there. For the Lord founded the earth and placed upon it all his creatures. If you contemplate upon the depths of the ocean, and on all that is beneath the earth, then the Lord is there, because the Lord created all things. Do not bow down to anything created by man, nor anything created by God, so committing apostasy against the Lord of all creation. For no kind of deed is hidden from the face of the Lord. Walk, my children, in long-suffering, in meekness, in honesty, in affliction, in distress, in faithfulness, in truth, 
in hope, in weakness, in derision, in assaults, in temptation, in deprivation. Having love for one another until you go out from this age of suffering, so that you may become inheritors of the never-ending age. How happy are the righteous who shall escape the Lord's great judgment, for they will be made to shine seven times brighter than the sun. For in that age everything is estimated sevenfold, light, darkness, food, enjoyment, misery, paradise, tortures, fire, frost, etc. All this I have put down in writing, so that you may read it and think about it. And when Enoch had spoken to his people, the Lord sent the gloom onto the earth. It became dark and covered the men who were standing and talking with Enoch. The angels hurried, grasped Enoch, and carried him up to the highest heaven, where the Lord received him and made him stand in front of his face for eternity. Then the darkness departed from the earth, and it became light. But the people looked, and they understood how Enoch was taken away. They glorified God and went away to their homes.